What was your maybe I am the bad guy moment? When I realized that everyone I came into contact with would eventually hate me. I used to blame them, but honestly, it is me. I am the bad guy. I need to get my shit together. When I started connecting the dots and realized that my friendships never last. Not that I'm the bad guy, but maybe I'm the problem. It probably took me a couple of years to realize but all of the, romantic at least, relationships I've had that have ended have been because of me slash my own actions. I never thought it was my fault at the time, but on reflection, and with a bit of distance I can see that it was pretty much always my fault. Just looking back at my relationships and seeing a pattern forming then boom, I am the bad guy. I used to be a POS, leave them down, log my problems at them without helping them back, etc. Since then, I've started seeing the psychologist and working on myself. Of course, I still need a lot of work, but things are getting better. We are all villains in someone else's story. I have zero friends. Lonely as hell. Not one person from high school wanted to remain friends. Took me a long time to realize that I'm a dick. Also, all my exes thought I was a dick as well. Update didn't realize so many people connected with this. I spent the past few years reflecting, and as unoriginal as this might be. The problem lay in me not respecting or thinking well of myself. I work on changing that every day. And most importantly I love my immediate family. Beyond that if people want to be friends I'm happy to engage but it's now love myself and treat my family great first. This has helped me greatly. Not sure where it'll be five years from now. After I graduated high school, slowly but surely, each of my closest friends began dropping off my radar as soon as I left my hometown. For a while I thought they were the problem, but after a hard look in the mirror and a lot of reflection, I came to realize that I was an actual bully in high school. I was really, really mean to a lot of kids who didn't deserve it at all, including my old friends. I've since done rounds of apologies, not expecting forgiveness or repaired relationships by any means, just wanted to right some wrongs, but it's changed my whole perspective on who I was growing up, and who other people remember me to be. When my mom told me to be careful about people who could get me to do drugs. At that moment, I had flashbacks of each and every single person I introduced to different substances from tobacco to LSD. I felt like Heisenberg saying I am the one who knocks. When I abandoned my 12-year-old son overnight, during the worst thunderstorm of the year, when I went out to drink, and got arrested, was bailed out mercifully, 10 a.m., by a stranger, only to get home and find out that my good friend had come to my rescue and was taking care of my son, who at 6 a.m. when he could not find me freaked out not knowing where I was. This was nine years ago. Got sober, for keeps, and still here nine years later, 1-0 in October. It took at least 30 30 day chips for me to get any decent amount of time behind me. Never give up, never ever give up. When I finally said a joke that was just cruel and not funny in the slightest and someone actually called me out on it. I am forever grateful to that guy because it really made me rethink my interactions with friends and how I treat those close to me. I still slip sometimes and can have impulsive speech but am much more aware. A lifetime of being insensitive and the people around you going along with it takes time to break but I am much better for it. One New Year's Eve in college, this girl invited all of my friends to her night party but not me. Assuming it was an oversight, I showed up with my friends, upon arrival, she immediately looks at me, says who invited him, and proceeds to ignore me all night. I ended up getting blackout drunk during which time, LVE since been told that I groped a female friend threw up all over the host's bathroom, threw up on myself, and then spent the rest of the night in my underwear and jacket passed out in a corner. For years, one justified being a drunk asshole because that girl was a bitch to me. Only after I quit drinking did I realize that she was probably justified in not wanting me there, because I very clearly had a binge drinking problem. When I told a young child that feelings aren't important, outcomes are and that I expected him to preform at a higher level. I was told by a friend later that day that was a stone-hearted monster. I had to let that sink in. This might not fit perfectly here but, being a dick to my parents as a teenager. I know, basically all teenagers are dicks to their parents sometimes. 
But now I'm 33 and growing past 20 I started to realize how sweet, caring and loving my parents are and how insanely lucky I am to have them and how much I took that for granted. I regret that I had to become an adult to realize that because it leaves me with less time with them. I've gotten much closer to them over the years and I feel like my love for them is constantly growing. I just spent two weeks with them for Christmas and New Year but I have to go back to where I live tomorrow and already miss them. Mom, Dad I love you. An old co-worker called me out one day for being a shit disturber. I was always in the middle of the drama egging people on and spreading gossip thinking I was being funny when in fact I was completely oblivious to all of the tension I was causing. Took a real hard look at myself for that and I hope LVE gotten better but Lee still to this day catch myself pulling the same shit. I'm a big guy with a very outgoing personality. I joke with my friends and acquaintances regularly. One day this guy must have had enough of my joking and called me a bully, and said others thought the same but never said anything because I'm intimidating. I've never intentionally meant to hurt anyone's feelings, but it was a nice wake-up call to check myself. When my ex finally left me and I realized how toxic and manipulative I had become. I saw that I was just becoming my father and was basically doing everything he was doing to me, to my ex projecting I guess you'd call it. But I also had some bad depression and anxiety and that coupled with insecurity and drug addiction just kind of fucked my whole personality and once she left May realized how little I was left with. Shit's a lot better now but I always feel so ashamed to think about myself back then. I had a short time in my life where I was addicted to drugs. I stole from every single person I came across. I used to always justify myself by saying I was their bad karma until I got clean and realized I was the worst person I could ever have met. When my math teacher sat on the floor and started crying in the middle of geometry at like 9 in the morning. Was emotionally manipulative towards a friend after she rejected me. I'm trying my best to be a better person after it, but I was a really bad person. When I saw my kids a year ago and they didn't recognize me because I had missed the better part of their first year of life. Used to be something of a spelling and grammar Nazi online until my dad joined Facebook and I realized he sometimes gets things a little wrong. Didn't want him to feel bad and then I realized I'm a frigging jerk. We all make mistakes and poking fun at other people's SS mistakes or even dyslexia makes you a dick. When I refused to take my then GF to my HS prom because she was struggling at the time yeah it still gets to me years later. Watching Breaking Bad. I realized that making meth maybe wasn't such a good career path. I dumped my girlfriend the same day her granddad died. Not my best moment emo. Being almost 28 and not having one intimate relationship with a woman. I don't think I'm bad but I'll do have to find out what I'm doing to push women away. I've had two, really. Once when I realized that I'm the reason my acquaintances never transition into friendships, because I don't maintain them, and once when I was in my senior year of high school. I made some half-joke comment about slacking off and a girl in the conversation turned to me and said disgustedly oh, you're one of those people. And for a moment I thought oh. Mabel am. Being in the military and seeing people whose homes and lives were destroyed by us. Instead of helping or compensation, we just left them. I'm not surprised that the insurgency happened. After I started realizing my edgy and dark humor which was just blatantly sexist, homophobic, racist and all-around disrespectful jokes can actually hurt people. Isterud to realize this after having long and deep conversations with some of my friends and realizing I had in fact hurt them with these jokes in the past. It's been a struggle to suppress that part of me but I've been more positive and feeling like a better person because of it. One day I made fun of a girl on the bus who was having a hard time already as it was. Did it without thought. Wasn't flirting, just being an ass. Wasn't even funny, mostly cruel. This girl then proceeded to beat the shit out of me. It was beautiful, horrifying, and well deserved. I want to throw up even thinking I was ever someone's bully even for a day but I'm proud of her for what she did for herself and what she did for me. Hope you are thriving out there. Someone asked if I was being nice because I felt that entitled me to sex. And if I respect women, why don't I respect their sexual autonomy? If all I want is sex, why am I asking for a relationship? And if my interest is romantic, why am I saying my friend? 
opened my eyes to a lot of toxic behavior I had. And I thought I was being such a nice guy I'm still polite and respectful to women, I'm just honest with them about how I feel personally. Not only did it fix my dating drought back then, it's the reason I am in a good marriage today. When I rejected a girl who had a crush on me in the most harsh way. Can you believe it, even said to her that I was going to talk to her family about it. I was blind, saying to myself that this was the best way to deal with her because she was annoying, I was wrong. When I got rejected by another girl in the same way, it hurted me a lot, that's when I realized, maybe I was the bad guy after all. People kept saying to me that my words were always too harsh, even my family. When I realized that some comments or words that I used to say deeply offended some people, specifically women. I used to think that if you got offended by some words that you were just silly, that words don't have meaning if you don't assign them one. Indeed I was very wrong. Happy to say though that I don't say such words anymore. Nearly five years ago my heart was shattered by someone I got too comfortable with. She knew the right words to say Andy got attached. Few months later I match with someone on Tinder. We date for several months but I quickly realize my fault. I was dating her to have sex with her basically every time we met up. Just to get over the other girl. I felt like a coward and asshole for breaking up with her over the phone. When I realized I suck at keeping up connections with my friends. I'm pretty introvert and am entertained by myself, so I don't feel of need to be surrounded by friends all the time. Or nearly ever. I love my close friends though. But feel like we're falling apart year by year. What these jerks all said. Nobody told me being a jerk wasn't a personality, they just avoided me. Big oversight on my end, for sure. In 2000 something, I was a conservative. I voted down ballot a lot for Republicans cause my family did. Then moved to California for work. Then I lost my job to no fault of my own. In order to survive, I had to use what my family called socialism programs until I found a new job. My wife and kids needed these services like SNAP, Keep Your Home California and WIC. I felt ashamed at first but rationalized that I had paid into them for years so it was okay for me to use them, yes. I was a hypocrite, after six months, I found a new job and came off the services and realized that these programs saved my life. I realized how important they are now and voting against them by voting conservative was wrong. This got me researching and realizing that not everything is socialism and I am now leaning more liberal but just consider myself independent and vote based on issue and not party lines. Lalso don't watch Fox News anymore so I am much less fearful and happy about life. Thank you California for saving my life and making me a happier person overall. That I was repeating the same behavior as my narcissistic parents. My low self-esteem and fear of rejection was causing me to strike first and devalue or belittle people that I love. I wasn't showing those people the respect they deserve and it was causing rifts in my relationships. I've since decided to never speak ill of anyone I care about ever again. I was the problem and I was talking shit about people who didn't deserve it realizing you're the problem is a real bummer but I've tried to acknowledge my shitty behavior and let people know that I understand if they want to cut ties and that now understand how poorly I was treating them. When I saw a tab opened on my girlfriend's phone saying how to prevent countless pointless arguments that's when I realized I need to work on it, and badly. I'm happy to say it's fixed and we are so much better. Standing on a sidewalk and listening to children screaming after learning that their father had just died, and having my editor tell me to knock on the door anyway. Fuck that. Bounced. Lied that they declined to comment. Reporters can do good. But the demands of a daily news cycle lead to shitty decision making by editors and reporters as to what qualifies as news. When someone, somewhere is mad about something popular and writes it on Twitter, it's like editors think they just discovered the Nixon tapes. Did you see at Twink Clybute Sparkler Furry hates the new Star Wars movie because they said it is offensive to see if you can get any activists on the phone to turn it into something. People would read that. Yeah they might read it, but should they? It's stupid shit like that that turned me off of news completely. I spent 20 years as a reporter. I'm disgusted and done. When I think how I used to throw the word gay and fag around, Lots of us in the 90s were gay men like that slamay. Oh man.
Okay, time for a non-romantic story. Back in the days of MSN Messenger, in my last year of high school, as a prank, I led the entire class into catfishing this guy who nobody liked. He was obnoxious and sexist, but in retrospect, very clearly not deserving of what I put him through. It was the week leading up to Valentine's Day, and I wrote a love note in the handwriting of a girl knew he liked, and who I also knew had made it clear didn't like him back. I gave him a fake email address in the note and told him to add me on MSN and we can chat to let bygones be bygones. Valentine's Day was on Monday. Through the weekend, I reeled this guy in online until he spilled his deepest, darkest secrets and fears to me. And while I was impersonating the girl with him in one chat window, I had the entire class in a group chat in a second window and was pasting the conversation to them live. I convinced him to meet me in an empty classroom on Monday, and hinted what kind of chocolates I liked. He walked into the classroom and a minute later, we swarmed in and started laughing at him. There were perhaps 15 of us. As far as I know, he still doesn't know who was the one actually chatting with him. He actually considered me a friend in the time I knew him. For the rest of the year, the entire class would read out transcripts of the chat he had that weekend. We made a play out of it. It was an obscene, shitty, vile thing to do to him. Not sure where he is now. Hopefully not still scarred by this. I made a girl cry in class during high school because I noticed she was freaking out hyperventilating slash grunting during a test so I wanted to slide her my answer since I studied the hell out of it she refused to look and turned away my dumbass thought she believed she couldn't see it so I pushed the paper farther to her when teacher wasn't looking after test was over I saw her crying her eyes out as she stared dead at me with such an intensity mixing anger with dread that her look basically screamed what the fuck is your problem leave me alone. Look at what you did to me. I realized she was that terrified of cheating and I was basically forcing that upon her I panicked slash tried to apologize but was so shook I kept stuttering then we lost contact since she understandably avoided me the rest of high school I wish I could apologize to her formally ever since, because the look of her face that day is burned into MMY head. I cannot hold on to any friendships. Because I don't want to. Every friend I've ever had I've gotten sick of and tried to find ways to distance myself from them without confrontation. I get sick of people. Sometimes even family members. I don't know why I'm like this slash. Back when I was a guy in high school, my senior year I was hanging out with my favorite people from my cliques. Drama, choir, that sort of stuff. School had 200 kids. My little brother did something stupid and in the way so I punched him and pushed him out of the way and continued on. My parents had seven kids together, and this is how we all treated each other, I got the shit beaten out of me, I beat the shit out of them, so the cycle goes. Well, rumors started getting around that I hit my girlfriend and I was abusive and I was so so confused until I outright yelled at people to figure out what was going on when they told me. And that's when I thought, maybe I am the bad guy. I didn't accept it for at least a month, I thought it was just the way my world worked and it worked for me. I realize now that that isn't a good way to think. Having complete selfishness isn't a virtue like I thought it was. I'm a girl now, I'm a much better person. My first instinct is still violence and selfishness, but my second thought is what is best for myself and the people around me. Things are better now, people aren't afraid of me now, and life is better. Six months after I broke up with my ex-partner of eight years. Realized LD managed to create a fictional list of things they were doing to make me unhappy. My new, now ex, girlfriend actually doing these things realized what an insufferable selfish ass I'd been. Ruined my life because refused to see I had problems imo. When I deliberately started to isolate myself when drinking so that I didn't hurt anyone. Took getting set down by a close friend of mine and getting told how terrible I am when I drink that he can't be around me anymore for me to even acknowledge that'll have a problem. Not anywhere close to having it all under control, but at least I know how to keep other people safe from myself. Fire slash medic here, currently staged on a suicidal subject. As dispatch is toning us out to suicidal female wrestling with husband over a gun, I'm yelling bet she want. My friends googled narcissism and said it fit me to at. This happened recently so I've spent the last two days reading everything I can about it and a lot of it resonates with me. LTS really painful to look at yourself in that way. 
I made an appointment with my mom's psychologist to try and understand it a bit better but it might be too late. I feel rejected by a lot of women online. It's not that don't get any matches. I managed to get some and I'll start talking to them regularly. Slowly build a strong relationship towards them at the start until we constantly text day and night. Then, OFC, both of us start to sext with each other towards the middle of our relationship. Once VE seen them naked and we've done the deed, I completely ignore them. I don't even bother having sex with them later. They get hurt and send me a long message for ignoring them on how they miss me and stuff. Eventually, they block me. I was honestly doing to many women. I thought it's just women being women and their hormones. But, recently, got into reading and self-reflection every day for 10 minutes. Finally, realized I was the problem. I was the bad guy. I used them like objects. This is what happens when you are addicted to porn. You don't give a crap about their feelings. I've realized I was the bad guy. Trying to sort myself up after realizing that, I haven't watched porn in couple of weeks now. A lot of things but I always think I'm a bad person anyway and I fear everyone I know hating me one day. I was a creep and an insecure dude who impulsively says harsh things. Maybe it's a symptom of OCD or maybe I'm genuinely repulsive. I have been the villain in people's stories though, it was never my intention but I did. I'm trying to be better. When my ex-wife tried to get me to back off of pursuing my child custody lawsuit by acting suicidal and taking a handful of pills right in front of me, instead of calling the ambulance I just left her laying there on the floor. When I hooked up with a friend's girlfriend. We ultimately dated and it was horrible. I've always known I was a piece of shit for that. Two distinct times lied about my behavior to someone else I realized I was ashamed of myself. I was ashamed because I was being a proper cunt for no good reason. Someone was good to me and understanding in response to my mean-spirited, selfish behavior. It felt like I was a child being placated, because that was the best way to deal with me. Girl here. But really wanted to answer and say it out and proud for once, realizing my toxic behavior in relationships, and I was the reason they would fail and end so terribly. Glad to say now I found the person that made me want to better myself and ditch the toxicity. We couldn't be happier. When a girl told me she loved me, but at the time I only ever saw her as a friend. At that moment I could have said something more adjusted to the situation, but I basically just said I only like her as a friend and that was it for me. It takes some time to realize how hard it had to be for her and how she must have suffered by me making no big deal out of it. Well, you learn with age and she is now with some great guy from what she told me auntie have a great wife, so silver lining. I don't think you're the bad guy for it. You were upfront about your emotions. Much better than lying or stringing them on. I lost every friendship I had from school and my time in the military. I just don't care. I don't care how your mom is doing, I don't care how your garden is or how you built your car, I don't give a shit. I'm not trying to be mean-spirited but I hate being fake for people. I don't have the energy for it. I don't feel lonely or like I lost out but I'm definitely aware I'm the bad friend in the equation. My therapist was always defending me, being angry towards different people in my life who hurt me or were unfair, even when I wasn't angry myself. Then, in one session, we realized I am twisting these stories when I tell them to him, in an unconscious attempt to get him to be on my side. I didn't lie about anything, but some of the nuances must have been different than on real life. Then, together, we got a better glimpse on how I really hurt the people in my life, now I am not just an innocent victim. It was a powerful moment. So I am an Indian, in a city called Chandigarh I was traveling by foot to the nearest lake, quite famous tourist point. Somewhere in between I saw this foreigner lady maybe in her late 30s, she was waiting for a bus. T don't know why I thought she needs my help in some way, or had a feeling that I must go and help her. And she didn't even seem troubled or uneasy with something. But you know humans that foolish feeling of I'm not wrong, I am a superman, I will help everyone. I approached her with some very silly talk, and believe me my intentions were good, and if not good then it was not bad either. I don't know why I thought that she needs my help but as expected by any foreigner she thought I'm not a good guy Andy will harm her in one way or other. 
And the way she talked to me really kinda hurt my heart and I am totally okay with her behavior from her side. It was my foolishness that I was kinda hurt for. And after harshly ordered by her I continued my plot and felt very ashamed of myself. Well if she can read this post that would be more than amazing but if she can't still I wish her a very happy life and hope she loved India even after such a bad and foolish experience with me and still have a good image for whole India. Tanyavad One time I got off work and this guy ran up and punched me. Never seen him before. I was terrified LD get fired if I got caught fighting at work, so I grabbed his head, slammed it into the wall a couple times, and ran for the car. About an hour later I got a call from my girlfriend. Turns out the dude was her fiancé. He'd seen me leaving her place, and she told him where to find me after he confronted me about it. Apparently the guy had waited for a full eight hours for me to come off shift, only to get his ass kicked. I didn't know the girl was taken, but it still made me feel like a real asshole.